Okay, so this is the game. This is the end game of Kaimer Abdu Satarov. And um, the opening was about equal, and Abdu Satarov got outplayed um, somewhat. And Kaimer has a big advantage here um, for three reasons. He has a better rook, uh, he has a better king. His king can go up, and blacks can't. And he has a better pawn structure. Black has a isolated D pawn, which can be attacked by all three of white's pieces. So if two engines were playing, I don't know what would happen because um, Stockfish says it's plus 1.09. So it could be a draw with perfect play. It could be a win. Practically speaking, I think since defending is difficult, um, I would expect white would win a lot of the time. Maybe like white would win two thirds of the time and black would draw one third of the time. Okay, so in this position, the engine wants Abdu Satrov to play g5 ostensibly to stop king f4 and knight f4. So he didn't, he played h6, which the engine says is very bad. And this is funny because knight f4 and king f4 both look good, and he chose the wrong one. One of them is plus three, and one of them is plus one. So just by following simple rules and not calculating, you would play the right one if, you're, if you've watched my chess stream or had lessons with me or watched my videos. Of course... They don't, they don't play on general principle without calculation. A lot of their play is based on calculation, especially these players are both under 21. So they calculate and so forth. So it turns out the best move is king f4 and then walking your king up. And the engine says white is plus three um, and therefore should probably win. But he played knight f4, which has the direct threat of the d-pawn. And typically, when the pawns are on one side of the board, four versus three is a draw. However, uh, in, in this instance, if black just passes and lets white take this and they trade, that would be a winning rook endgame because it's, this pawn isn't like on h3, it's on d4, it's a pass d-pawn. And black has uh, made his king quite exposed, and my king can walk in. White has a lot of advantages here. So that's, um, that's not good. Uh, okay, so the engine doesn't play the human move here, but Abdu Sitarov is a human, so he played the human move. The only move I would ever consider, rook b5 defending my pawn. I would never think of another move. Then he played knight e6 check, which is just sort of a random check. It doesn't really hurt anything. And then he played knight c5. And probably Abdu Satorov, when he played knight f4, he thought, well, maybe I should play knight f4. I'm sorry, Kamer, not Abdu Satorov. Kamer probably thought, well, I could play knight f4, king f4. I don't know. But I can play king f4 later. So it's not. I'm not in a big hurry. So I'll play knight f4, I'll see how that is. And he made the time control with the move knight e6 check. And now he can think a long time and decide whether to go here or to reposition his knight on f4. And black, because of his bad move on move 38, h6, no longer has the option to play g5, which he should have played because his h pawn's hanging. If his pawn was on h7, he could play g5 and stop king f4. Then it might be more critical for white to do that, uh, play king f4 right away. Since king f4 can't be prevented, he can play it later. And now the engine says white's up 1.5. So that, that's typically winning, typically in, in the endgame. Okay, he played rook b2. So now I would not recommend playing king f4 because your f1's hanging. Played knight d3, attacking the rook, repositioning his knight to e5 and defending his f-pawn, so he can play king. So knight d3 makes sense. He attacked the knight, knight e5 check. The king has to go to g7 because the rook and the knight attack the g-pawn, so we have to defend it. 
Okay. And if, if you play rookie six with the idea he moves his knight, then I take the g-pawn, or he defends his knight, and I still take the g-pawn, after rookie six, I can play rook b7, and then you can't take anything for free. So he played rook d7. The king can go to f8 or f6. They're about the same. He went to f6 because he's a human. The engine actually prefers f8, but humans generally will go forward with their king as opposed to backward unless they've calculated 10 moves ahead and decided, okay, king f 8s better. But, I mean, there's not a lot of calculation here. There's like, how do I win the g-pawn? How do I win the d-pawn? And black's like, how do I defend those? And then if white never wins a pawn, then it should be a draw. If white does win a pawn, he should win. Okay, he played rook a7, engine agrees. This gets the rook away from the black king. It gives us the d7 square for the knight. We can check here. We can attack the pawn from the side. Rook's good on a7, can't be harassed very much. Rook b2, keeping an eye on the f2 pawn. And he played g4, which engine, engine approved. Always play g4. Like, um, and, and the idea is, if you take on g4, typically in an end game where you're trying to defend. So here, it's clear that white's better. Black doesn't have any winning chances. White has a lot of winning chances. Typically, you wouldn't play g4 because you don't want to trade pawns. However, in this position, if black trades pawns, then his king has to defend his knight, and his king has to defend his h-pawn. So white, white just gets a free pawn, and black's going to be left with two isolated pawns. And white is actually threatening, if you can call it a threat, to take on f5, and you can't take with the king because I'll play rook takes knight. If you take with the knight, I'll play rook a6 check and win your g-pawn. And if you take with the g-pawn, you have three isolated pawns, which is going to basically be impossible to defend. You can't defend three isolated pawns when the guy has a rook, a knight, and king up all up in your grill. So g4 is a great move. Okay, and black played g5, and white blundered. And when I say white blundered, in this position, if two engines are playing, white wins 100% of the time. <clears throat> the engine says white's up 3.75. So this is a very easy win for an engine. And the engine line is to check. We must play king g7 because it's no other move. And then we take on f5. We must take on f5. So this is a forcing line. Then we play rook here check. And if you go to the f file, rook here check wins your knight. So you're going to go to h7. Then I attack your knight. And you're going to move your knight. Now if you move it here, I take it. If you move it here, I check and take it. So your options are to go to g7 or h4, and they're both terrible. Um, the engine very slightly prefers g7, but okay, it doesn't matter much. And then knight g4, attacking the pawn. h5 is forced, because you can't defend your pawn otherwise. Then we play rook h6 check. Then we play knight f6 check. And then we decide which pawn we're going to take. And the engine says white's up about 2.5. Okay. And that's forced. And if you're an engine, you see that. If you're a human, you don't. Okay, maybe because Sparov in his prime or Anand in his prime. But okay. And in this position, he made a bad move. And when I say it's a bad move, it's not the right move. So mathematically, it's a bad move. But it's bad because it shows a lack of understanding of what's happening. And Siddler was very upset. Fiddler said, White's played perfectly the whole game, and here he throws everything away. But as Karen will attest to, you guys can't see, but Karen can, there's a lot of colors going on here later. Uh, that's not good, especially when it's red. Yeah. So there's mistakes. Every move is a mistake. And truth hurts. Okay, so he played King G3. Uh, he played King G3. Okay, instead of the, the winning line. And this is a blunder, um, after which maybe White's winning, but he obviously underestimated or misunderstood the move F4 check. 
And, you know, if black has his druthers, we'll just trade all the pawns off and white has no advantage. Like, why, why is white better? You know, if we just take everything, take, 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 take. It's just two against two. White's pawns are isolated. This is just a draw. Okay, so finally, black has counterplay um, after f4 check. He takes, he takes, and now he can't play king takes pawn because of rook takes f2 check, which I just showed you. So he played king f3. And the difference between this position and the previous position, if we go back just a few moves before he played g4, this pawn structure is unassailable. I mean, that's solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, because he played g4 and took, now his pawns are all weak, just like black's pawns are all weak, especially the d pawn. It's amazing that the D pawn is isolated when white had this great pawn yeah, structure. King's more exposed now. Right. Now, I don't know if this is a win or a draw. It's close. And if he played the right move instead of king g3 and he played like an engine, it's 100% a win. Now it's like, I don't know, 50-50. And probably some of the 50-50 is the fact that maybe black will make a mistake as opposed to both sides play perfect and it's 50-50, then it's probably 40-60. Okay, so he played rook d2, keeping an eye on the d4 pawn. He wants to take it. Rook check, king moves back, and he plays rook b6. And there's a tactic here which ended up happening. Uh, in fact, it happened now. And Svidler and Howell thought it was just a dead, dead draw after the tactic. And it turned out white has a big advantage, if not winning. Unclear. Uh, but 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 black black probably has to do that anyway. Black played rook takes d4, and it looks like a blunder, because now white has a trick. But then black has a trick, mm -hmm. and then white had a trick that Fiddler and Howell didn't see. So the game went on instead of just agreeing to a draw. Okay, so the first trick is we attack the knight. It's pinned. Mm -hmm. It's going to be taken with check. So you have to play king f6 or king f8. Doesn't matter which one. Thank you, Rat Ratifusio. And then you take it because if king takes rook, knight c6 check, forks the king and rook and wins. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So both players saw this, that this was playable. And now white, black plays rook e4 and wins his piece back. And once this happened, Svidler's like, they're going to agree to a draw any minute because white's going to win some pawn, black's going to win the knight, and it's rook and two versus rook and two. Okay, but, but Keimer had seen more. The players see more than the commentators. He played rook h6. And rook takes knight just loses. I play rook takes pawn check. Um, and then I'll win this pawn, and I have two pass pawns. So you have to take with the king takes and like this is two versus two which seems like a draw but it's if it is a draw it's because black's playing really well because it's very hard to hold on to your f pawn and stop the g pawn it's, it's, pawns are sort of loose okay and he played uh rook b4 rook check now we have a decision to make and he made the wrong decision and it's funny when When people make wrong decisions at this level, if I said they played too passive or too aggressive, or at a class level, players between like 1,000 and 1,600, mm -hmm. it's the opposite mistake. Low-rated players play passive when they should play aggressive. High-rated players play aggressive when they should play passive. They just can't play passively. They can't do it. The engine moves the king back and says probably it's a draw. But he played king d4 because, you know, homie don't play that. <laughs> Abdu Satarov is going to play aggressively and, and try to play that way. In this position, white made an error. White played rook h8, and he should have played rook f5. And after rook f5, if you're like, well, I'll just give this pawn up and I'll queen this pawn. Mm -hmm. How? <laughs> if you play king here, I take the pawn. So, uh, and you can't take it with the king, 
The pawn? In this position? Yeah. You could, and then black would do what he wants. He would play Stab king it. check, and then he yeah. would start pushing his pawn. Right, okay. But after rook f5, how does he How does he get this pawn going? If he plays king here, I take the pawn. If he plays king here, I play rook takes check, and then d4, your pawn's pinned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rook f5 is winning. He played rook h8. Black thought better of what he did, and he played king e5. And after check, he correctly played king f6 instead of back to d4. He's like, okay, no, wait a minute here. Okay, and in this position, he blundered. And when I say he blundered, it's just because the engine can look 25 moves ahead and say, no, that's wrong. You're going to lose this pawn, and the way to lose it, it turns out, is to play king e5, which he did not play. Rook f5 check, king e6, rook takes f4, um, and then d4, rook b8 are both okay, I think. And this is a table-based position, and since the engine is looking 30 moves ahead and saying white's plus one, I think it's a draw. But it's a table base. Actually, I can click table base, I guess. Oh, no, white's winning here. Table base. Go table base. Yeah. And the table base doesn't work until we take the pawn on f4 because it's seven pieces. Okay. So actually, I, I guess king e5 also loses. Okay, see, he's losing here. The, the engine's not good enough to see he's losing here. He played king to g6. And... White made another mistake. White should play rook to d8. And if you play rook to b5, I take the pawn. If you play d4, I take the pawn. And so you have to play rook to d4. And then your rook really can't move. It's defending both pawns. And then it says rook e8 wins. But that's too complicated. He just played rook f5, which is more of a human move. Unfortunately, that may throw the win away. Because now he played d4. And you can't play d4 if your rook's on d4, and that's the counterplay that you need to draw. Okay, and... Wait, what do you... If you play king takes, for example, yeah, then I check. Oh, okay. And then I'm pushing, and your pawn's hanging, and rook d4 is happening, and rook takes pawn draws, but this is a cuter draw if you like cute. I don't know if you like cute, but... Okay, rook takes pawn's a dead draw. Okay, so he played rook to d5, which is good. King to f6. And now uh, the engine, without using a table base, wants to play king takes pawn. But I'm going to play king takes pawn, which he did not play. And then I'm going to turn the table base on because this is seven pieces. And this is a draw. King e6 draws. It's the only drawing move. Otherwise, you're losing. Okay. So he was correct not to take this. King e6 is a draw with perfect play. He played king e4. And the idea is, if it's white's turn, I'll take this pawn, and then I'll take that pawn. I'll have two pawns. I got two pawns, one for each of you. Okay, now in this position, the best move is f3. And the idea is, if you take this, then this is a drawn king and pawn endgame. And do you know what move draws for black here? Um... You got you got five legal moves. One of them draws. Let me see. I can't go there. And basically, this is like my my lecture on Monday that I gave on Zoom, which only two people. But it'll, it'll be on it'll be on YouTube in about three or four days. <clears throat> oh, so I think. Um... King f5? Close. Oh. When he takes this pawn, then you play king f5. So you have the opposition. Well, that's what I was talking about. I'm sorry. If you play king f5 now, I take the pawn and, and it's a win. Oh. You have to play king f5 after I take the pawn. So you have the opposition. Oh, yeah, as you take it, yeah. So you play here. And then after it takes Done. it. Done. I have the right idea. Mm -hmm. I'm just tired. Okay. So after f3, white can't play... Uh, king takes f. Uh, king rook takes d4. It's a draw. Mm -hmm. White has to try to win another way. Now, this is not a joke. 
I saw it on Twitter and I saw the I saw the picture. I didn't watch the video because it would have taken me like three seconds. They're watching this on a big screen in Germany. Watching what? <clears throat> this. Oh, the game. That's the only game going on. Every other game is over. Mm -hmm. And in Germany, they're rooting for Keimer because he's German. Mm -hmm. And they're watching it somewhere. I don't know where. Chess club? I don't know. But it's on some big screen. Everybody's watching. Okay. And after D3 check, White has one move that wins. And White found the move and they went, yay. Like everybody in Germany is like, yay. <laughs> Go Germans. Okay, so white to play and win. Um, let's see. I mean, I would just take it with king. King takes as a draw oh. because I play f3, attacking your pawn. If you play rook d4, that transposes to the previous king and pawn ending we just looked at. Mm -hmm. And if you let me take this pawn, it's a draw. So you have to go here, I go here, and you can't win. You go here, and I just I just do this. And I can just hang on to my pawn. And this is a draw. Mm -hmm. Table based. Too. Okay, so he played the only winning move. Well, obviously, rook d4 loses. So he played king f3. And now he's going to round up the pawns. Now he's winning. Okay, un until, until he wasn't. Okay, so black played king e6, which is correct. Rook takes d3 is correct. And the engine says white's up 5.5. And there's not much going on. It's not like i got to calculate 20 moves ahead. I win the f pawn and I win. Or I never win the f pawn and I don't win. But I do win because... Okay, so he, he, he made random legal move. Random legal move. Engine doesn't like that, actually, but it doesn't matter. King g2, the winning plan. Move your king up. You can't move your king up legally, so you do it this way. Move it on up to the king side. King f6. Okay, now he blundered. There's one move that wins here. Okay, black wants to play king g5. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can stop king g5. It's a very strange move, but it stops king g5. And it's rook h3. And that wins. Then you can never play king g5 because I'll check and take your rook. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, in fact, let me table base it to make sure. Yes, rook h3 is the only winning move. Okay. So he's winning if he plays rook h3. He played rook a8. Now it's a draw. Black has one move that draws. And he played a move that loses. He needs to play king g5. And then it's a draw with the correct play. He played rook here, stopping the white king. Now white has one move that wins. Black cut off the white king. Now white can cut off the black king. And white's threatening rook here check. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he did. So now he's winning again. So every move is like the table base is like winning, drawing, winning, drawing. And, you know, they're in. Black has plenty of time, 17 minutes. But he's tired. I mean, he's been playing for five and a half hours. There's 20 legal moves and one draw. You can't calculate six minutes a move unless you want to make three moves and lose on time. You, you, got, you got to move. In the middle game, they're thinking 10 minutes on some moves. Here, you think a minute, a minute and a half, then you move. If you think five minutes a move, you can make three moves and your flag falls. He had more time than Kamer. Right. Yeah. Right, gamer, you know, even less time. Hey, Big Daddy. Okay, now everything wins. Every move wins. He played one of them. And he played here. Okay, now, uh, this is actually quite funny. Uh, Rook takes pawn doesn't win. And he played f3, never play f3. And that does win. Rook takes f4 doesn't, doesn't, wasn't win. I go here. Your rook has to stay on your pawn, so I don't know, somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you go here. This is why it doesn't win. And then, and then you chill. And you, 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 you can never play f4 because I take this. Your king can't move up anywhere. And it's, it's a draw. The engine says it's a draw, not the engine, the table base. Okay. So he played f3. Okay, now 
if it was my move, I would take the pawn, and if you play that draw that I just showed you, king g5, I play rook f5 check, king h4, rook h5 mate. And the reason is my g pawn's defended. If my pawn is here, which it was last move, I can't play rook f5 check because my pawn's hanging. Right. So f3 threatens, rook takes f4. Uh -huh. So f3 is winning. Okay. He defended his pawn. Everything wins. He played one of the winning moves. Rook here. King h4. Rook here. And white found the winning plan. There's one plan that wins here, and he found it. He played the winning plan. First he gave it, you know, played silly, you know, playing around. Then he found the winning plan. Rook check. And black played king h7. So the idea is, I want your king on this square or this square. Okay, well, I'll, for example, because I want when I move my rook away, if you attack my pawn, I want to go check. And then I play king g4, and then uh, easy win. Take the f pawn. So instead of playing king here or king here, he played king h7, which was my idea. I was watching the game live. I'm like, king h7 stops all that. And then when he played king h7, so I was like, wow, that's really clever. And the reason it's clever is if you play king f7, you can't play rook here, not because of g5 check, which I prevented because I didn't, but rook here check wins the pawn and defends the, and defends the f pawn. So king h7 is the only move that gives white a tough time. Okay, and you still win. You can still play g5. You just have to play rook h5 check first. Then you can get g5 yeah, in, king g4, Papa John's. Okay, so he did. Okay, and then he's winning. And then king g4, rook h6 check, I win the f pawn, it's over. And I thought like for sure white's gonna win. He found the only winning plan. He didn't take on f4 when it wasn't winning. He played f3, played rook g5, he played rook h5, he played g5. Every move winning, he found the winning idea. Okay, now he played rook here. Rook h6 is the only move that wins. Rook f6 is the only move that wins. And now he blundered. <laughs> and I don't blame him. It's very hard to find the win here, okay? And the reason it's a win is when you, you can't save this pawn anymore. And when you can't save the pawn, what you wanna do is check this king away so it goes to the D file so I can win this pawn and queen this pawn. So the only moves that win are keeping your rook on the F line, okay? And I'll show you the difference between that and what he did. He played here and now it's a draw, okay? Because check, only legal move, check, check, and then rook here. Now, in this position, if the rook was on F8 or F7, we're winning because and the reason is when he checks, the king can go back and it can come back here and defend. If you play rook e8 check, the king can't come back there and defend because, I'll show you why. This is why rook f8 is better. Because in this position, which they got in the game, except the white rook was here, white plays the winning move, king g6. Stopping the black king from defending and then we check the king away. I don't know where the king goes, doesn't matter. And then we go here, then we win. We, we can win this pawn, we can queen this pawn, and this king isn't, this king isn't playing. That, that king's out of the game. And this is a win. And that was the only way to win, was to keep his rook on the F file, so when he plays king g6, he can play rook e8 check. The way that he did play the check, that didn't, that, that didn't work. He checked from b5, he checked from the side, then black can move his king back and defend. So that didn't work. Yeah, black's threatening mate, god damn. Okay, so he has to check him away. Yeah, he played g6, it doesn't matter. If he plays king g6, okay, now rook e8 check would win, but you can't play rook e8 check, so you can't win. You, you need to keep the king away from this, then you play king f5 and you win, but you can't do that. And if you check and play king f5, I literally don't care. You can take, you can take this pawn all day, I don't care. This dead draw. But if my king was over here, that'd be dead win. 
So, and I discussed this Monday in my class. This is too complicated for me because I'm tired. Right. Okay. So in the game, he played g6, and it's now Rick and Pawn against Rick and Pawn. And he didn't play that. They agreed to a draw, and they put the kings in the middle. <laughs> yeah. This actually, the end of this game, reminds me of the game that I drew Smear in in the World Open in 2002. I'm sure you were thinking of that game. Exactly. <laughs> Very similar, like, end of the game. <laughs> Thanks, McNubbits. Yeah, no. That game was 89 moves long. It's very complicated, and both players are playing just a few minutes on the clock, and they're not going to get an extra 30 minutes. You know, they just, you got to play. And at the risk of insulting everybody who ever lived who's not 2,700, which I will now do, you will feel personally insulted now. When you play a six hour game and you don't, most of you have not played a six hour game. Karen has, Karen's played five hour games, five and a half hour games, that's normal, okay? okay. When you play a six hour game or Karen does, okay, insulting my wife on the stream, the amount of stuff that she's analyzing is a lot to her. She's analyzing every move, move one, move two, analyzing, analyzing what her opponent will do, her opponent doesn't do that, thinking about what she'll do. She's like, should I do this? Nah, should I do this? Nah, nah. Okay, and every move you do that, and most of the stuff you analyze doesn't happen because only one move happens every move. Okay, and then you're exhausted. And Karen has told me more than once, and when I say more than once, more than 30 times, I was really tired at the end. At the end of the game, when it's five hours, you're exhausted. Oh, Especially yeah. when you play like two games in a day. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. The amount of stuff these guys see is like 50 times that. Okay. What you see. So they're playing an 89 move game and every move they're calculating dozens of variations and, and they don't happen. Some of them happen, but most of them don't. And if you make a mistake, you lose. Okay, if you're 1,300 playing another 1,300, you can get away with a lot of mistakes sometimes as long as they're small. If, you know, if you hang your queen, you probably can't get away with that, although maybe. These guys, they can't do nothing wrong, and that's every round. 2,700, 2,800, 2,700. And if the games are all six hours and they're doing that much thinking and they know any little mistake loses, it's very, very difficult at the end of the game to play well. And one thing that I've explained on my stream many times and in classes is the reason you'll see some pretty good end games 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago is they adjourned. And not only did they adjourn, they got an extra hour like every 20 moves. So they were never have to, having to make a move in two minutes. They always had a lot of time to think. They would adjourn the game for a day or two days or three days, have their seconds analyze it and have the analysis which obviously is doesn't make any sense it's silly today now you can't do that now you got to play and if the game's going six hours too bad and nobody helps you you don't get more time you just got to play until your flag falls so chess is harder now now obviously the older you get like me you've played a lot of end games because i'm old they're not old they haven't played a lot of close end games a lot of times when you're a weaker player, you guys know what I'm talking about, if you get to an ending, it's one-sided. You're up a rook and a bishop. That's not interesting. It is for you because you win. You're like, I promoted, I promote another pawn, and then you do this. Okay. Low-rated players are very proud of themselves when they're three, four, five queens up and they win. Okay. And if you play a really complicated, difficult rook and pawn ending, king and pawn ending, bishop and pawn ending where it's unclear who's better or both sides can win, it's frustrating because you got to be really careful. If you're up a rook and a bishop, you're just having fun. And these guys don't experience that because before the end game, they're not up a rook and a bishop because their opponent's already resigned. Playing Magnus Carlsen, you're down a rook in the middle game, you resign. You don't play a rook down end game. In your praxis, especially you at home, especially if you play Blitz and Bullet, 
you guys are always down a queen and up a queen and there's no time on your clock and it's fun, okay? These guys are just like positions are winning and drawing the table base depending on what move you make. And they're exhausted. And they're more exhausted than you can imagine. And a good uh, analogy is tennis. Tennis is the sport that's most like chess because in tennis, it's you against your opponent. Nobody's helping you. And when you play a five-hour tennis match, you're exhausted. Now, you've never played a five-hour tennis match, you at home, but if you did, you would collapse. And it's much harder at the top level to play a five-hour tennis match because those guys are hitting the ball much harder and they run a lot quicker and you're forced to run quicker and you really can't do that. You, bad tennis players can't play at the level of the great tennis players, so they don't play five-hour matches and they would be more exhausted, but they would be doing a lot less work because they just can't, you can't, you know, you're not a top professional athlete. You don't have a resting heart rate of 45. <laughs> right. I mean, you're, you know, you, you, you're the lowest of the low. So a five-hour tennis match to a top player against another top player is crazy. It's like running 10 marathons or at least one. It's, it's, it's tough. And that's what chess is like for these guys. Because when your opponent's Magnus Carlsen and then Fabi and then Abdus Sitarov and then all the Indian prodigies and then Aronian and then Wesley So, you can't make a lot of mistakes. And then when you've played for five and a half hours, you start making mistakes, tired. So you can't blame the players in the table-based position for not playing the correct move. It's too difficult. It's, it's unfair. I've never, I've never seen such. And that's why they get paid a lot of money and people buy their courses and they follow them and they root for them. And in Germany, they cheer and the guy still doesn't win. <laughs> and then you still never win. You, you at home, you've won more games than these guys. These guys never win. Draw, draw, loss, terrible. Et cetera. Can't you get a message? Oh, a massage during a chess game. You know, what's funny is you, you do get massage playing poker if you want. Chess game, I've never heard of it. I think that would annoy the opponent. Yeah, it's not part of the chess culture. Yeah, if you go to Vegas, even the casino we go to in North Carolina, you pay pay a dollar a minute or two dollars a minute for a massage. And then they massage you and then you lose all your chips, but at least your back feels okay. Mm-hmm. 